The cost of public colleges from the years 1995 to 2004 was, gr was growing steadily. In 1995, the cost was measured to be $3,508, and in 2004, was measured to be $7,020. Using this information, I use this information to determine a linear function for this data, for these data, whatever, um, letting x be the number of years since 1995. <clears throat> All right, so there's a couple of things before I start on this problem. I do want to point out we are being told to use a linear function. Um, uh, we're being told to use a line, essentially. Um, that's not always the best uh, descriptor. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're talking about, um, especially when, when you're talking about inflation, oftentimes it doesn't. It, it starts to grow faster than a line, um, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. We don't need to complicate this. We're being told to just make a line. Um, now, you do want to uh, make sure that when, when you're told a specific value to use for your x, that you actually listen to that. So x is the number of years since 1995. So let's think about what points we have here. In the year 1995, um, in 1995, the cost was measured to be $3,508. Well, in the year 1995, the number of years since 1995 is zero. It's no years since 1995. It's zero years after 1995. So our x coordinate here is going to be zero, and our y coordinate is going to be, well, it doesn't say it, but it makes sense for this to be our cost, $3,508. Um, in 2004, this is, what, nine years later? Um, we are nine years after 1995. So our x coordinate, so let's write year here, 1995 and 2004. Um, even though you know our year is 1995, we're told to make our x the number of years since 1995. So we got zero and nine. The big reason that you want to do this is to just make your numbers smaller. If you're multiplying by 1995, um, even if it's not very big. Um, it can make your y-intercept really wonky, you know, make your y-intercept really weird, actually. Um, because this is pretending that you have a linear growth all the way down to um, the whole BCAD turnover period. Um, and, you know, you're going to have a very negative amount of, yeah, whatever. It's going to be just a, be a weird result. So it does kind of make sense to say, let x be a particular date, you know, um, the number of years since a particular date. You just want to watch out for stuff like that, especially in this class you'll see a couple of those and they just about always trip people up. All right, so um, in 2004, x is zero and y is 7,020. At this point, it's just a quite, it's just a, um, an exercise in doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 because we need to find the slope of this line which is going to be um, 7020 minus 3508 over 9 minus 0. Pull out my calculator. Gives us 3512 over 9. When I divide that by 9, I get 390.2 repeating. All right. Um, now, I could do the whole y equals mx plus b, plug stuff in, but if you think about it for a second, I already know my y-intercept. My y-intercept is right here. This is another advantage of stating that x is the number of years since somewhere, sometime you have data. Um, the, my x-intercept is th uh, 3,508. So in total, my equation is y equals 390.2 repeating times x plus 3508. Um, let's see. So that's my linear cost. Based on this equation, what was the predicted cost of colleges in 2000? All right, so in 2000, don't just go plugging 2000 in for x, because remember, x is not the year. x is the number of years since 1995. x would be 5 in this case. So in the year 2000, x equals 5. We get three, uh, 390.2 repeating. If I recall correctly in the book or in the homework, I think they might just round this off to 390.2. Um, 
instead of trying to do the whole repeating thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that as well. Times 5 plus 3508. Uh, I seem to recall that this was, you were kind of cued to do this because you were told to round it to the nearest uh, nearest tenth of a dollar or nearest cent, maybe. Maybe it was the nearest cent. Maybe it should be 0 0.22. I don't remember. I'm just going to keep going. Um, let's see. We get 390.2 times 5 plus 3508, which gives us 5,459. So according to this model, colleges would cost that much. It is known that the actual cost of colleges in 2000 was $5,200. The, uh, the difference between the estimated cost and the actual cost is blank percent of the actual cost. All right, this is kind of a tricky question, so you know it's a good thing you're watching this video. So what this is saying, the difference between the estimated cost and the actual cost is something. The easiest way, or the, the only real way I see to do this, is to do a direct translation. This is actually a statement. Um, it's an algebraic statement, and whenever we see a statement, that means we can translate that into an equation. So the difference between the estimated cost and the actual cost is. That's the left-hand side of the equation. The difference between estimated cost, that's this number up here, 5, 4, 5, 9, and the actual cost, so that number minus 5200, 0, 0, is, that's an equal sign. So you can see I did the, the difference that's talking, that's cueing me that I need to do subtraction. The estimated cost and the actual cost, so I'm keeping those in order, that's another thing, um, is blank percent of the actual cost. So how I like to do this is I like to just call this big thing x. x times the actual cost. And when I finish this problem, I'm just going to convert that to a percent. Um, I don't like dealing with percent signs in the middle of a, an equation or anything like that. So let's just um, let's solve for x. We have 5459 minus 5200, zero, zero, which is 259. Oops, times. I thought that was minus. This is a percentage of the actual cost. When you see of, that word means times, so a percentage of 5,200, because 5,200 is the actual cost. Um, and then we need to, to finish solving for x, we need to divide both sides by 5,200, which gives us 259 divided by 5,200, which gives us 0 0.0498. And lastly, I'll convert this to a percent by moving my decimal place two places over there as I introduce the percent symbol. So the difference between the estimated cost and the actual cost is 4.98% of the actual cost. All right, last question here. What is the rate at which the cost is increasing per year on average? Let's look back at the model. So this model says uh, 390.2 plus 3508. Okay, so if we're starting out at some year, if we're trying to figure out the increased cost per year on average, um, then we're just going to use the model here. And we're going to say, okay, if it's starting out here, and we're talking about moving over exactly one year, what would that, what would the raise in the cost be? Well, normally when we're talking about figuring out where to move, we use our slope, right? Um, but I'm saying we want our run to be exactly one. So if we move to the right one year, our cost should go up by exactly, well, by approximately uh, $390.2. Because our slope is 390.2 over one. So this number right here, whatever our slope is, tells us the average rate of change here. That's a, this is actually one way that you can interpret a slope of an, of a, an equation. It's your average rate of change. So, $390.2.